If you're just now logging in, a welcome to our webinar series. Today, we're going to be talking about practical steps to transition to a paperless HR department. If you have not heard of HR Partner, we are an HRMS solution that com combines simplicity and ease of use with accessibility. And so we do offer quite a bit in terms of paperlessness for our clients without that price tag of big companies. Um, Again, my name is Sarah Brandenburg, and I work as a part of our customer success team here at HR Partner. My background is in human resources, where I've managed employees, policies, procedures, recruitment, and all aspects of human resources for small to medium-sized businesses. That's my background in the corporate work before moving into a customer success role. I do hold an active PHR, Professional and Human Resources, which is a, an American-based certification um, based on the HRCI's certification process. And I love working with our current clients to consult on how HR Partner can both support your organizations and provide any consulting as necessary. I'm gonna go ahead and stop my video today so you can focus on the content of the slides. So today, let's go ahead and get started and talk a little bit about why paperlessness is a worthwhile goal and an important step for your team and your organization. So going paperless does streamline your HR process. The project and the exercise of going paperless can seem so daunting at first, but you will notice that this process will force you to identify areas where your own department can be more streamlined and operate in an efficient manner. This process also allows your documents and your data to be accessible from any location and in today's environment. Many of us are working from home or operating from a remote workspace. Allowing your documents, your personnel files, and your records to be available online will ease the burden for someone who is working from home. They will still have the exact same access as if they were in the office, which is very, very important. This makes operations much easier across all team members. Um, it also allows information to be accessible from any location at any time and allows your department to work more flexibly. Um, this allows your employees to have a little bit more autonomy, which will likely lead to a happier employee overall if they're able to have a little bit more of that autonomousness. Um, one of the things that we always get questions about when we talk through paperlessness from our clients is security concerns. These are always so important to our team at HR Partner and storing your files in the HR Partner system is a simple way to put your mind at ease. Um, HR Partner is committed to transparency and our security practices and security standards are listed on our website. We have a security section that you can answer, you can take a look at at any time. We are compliant with a number of important security standards, including GDPR and SOC 2 compliance. And we're proud to use servers that are hosted by the world's leading cloud hosting providers. So that means that security is something that you can not worry about when your files are stored in HR Partner because they are as secure as possible. And it should always be top of mind when researching and considering a new HR management system. So when you're looking through the process of paperlessness, one of the things that needs to be top of mind is, are my files secure? Can they be accessible? How are they going to be accessible? Those are all important important steps of going paperless. Also allowing your department and your team to take part in waste reduction. Um, if you use less paper, there's less that's going to waste. And this can also go hand in hand with upholding your current company's values and standards. It creates a good image um, to the outside world, sending out electronic paperwork signals that you are a modern company, that you're professional and cutting edge in terms of technology and processes. This is especially relevant when you're hiring and onboarding new team members. I mean, the best and the brightest candidates look for companies like this. They wanna be a part of companies who are considered to be on the cutting edge. And if you are presenting yourself as somebody who is a little bit more paperless, um, you are upholding that same image and brand as a part of your organization. So we know that it can be a daunting task to start going paperless and to get started. And we don't want you to be overwhelmed by the largeness of a project like this. So we have a couple of areas where we want you to talk through and it is like any new project software. It's a project management process going paperless. Uh, so we've outlined three different areas that will help you get started on the road to being paper-free. 
First, uh, take stock of your current HR processes. Create a full checklist of every area that may need to be electronically transitioned. You can then evaluate which processes can be streamlined by moving into your paperless process. And so this process is, is excellent because checklists are a great way to track everything that's done and to evaluate what's needed. This will also help you just get started with the process to figure out what areas of your HR department are currently paperless, are currently paper-based, what ink signature required, uh, e-signature is allowed. Um, creating a checklist is a great way to start. Our second tip to getting started is to identify your timeline. As with any new project, there are many, many moving parts, but setting clear timelines, setting clear goals for you and the team is an easy way to stay on top of your overall end goal. Um, so you have to think to yourself, when do you want to move to be paperless completely or partially? Um, what processes should be prioritized and why? And then break up that checklist into actionable parts. Again, start small. So you take that checklist, you add a date to it or a, a goal. Maybe you highlight those different sections and you say, I'm going to start with personnel files. Personnel files are going to go first. And this, this is going to be kind of our dip the toe in the water to that paperlessness process. Last but certainly not least, it's incredibly important to educate and involve your stakeholders when starting a project like this. Start by setting a meeting with your team to set expectations early, an internal HR department meeting, and then coordinate a meeting with other key leaders to share your vision and to get others involved. As with any opportunity for your HR department, this is an opportunity for you to be the inspiration for the rest of the company to set the example. Um, this definitely should not be a one person crusade um, and it's definitely a great way to involve others and to align others' values and visions with the rest of the company. I said this before, um, but it's a great way for the HR department to pave the way for other departments to follow by starting this yourself, involving other stakeholders and other leaders to show them your intentions and to show them your goals with going paperless. So let's move on and talk a little bit about the areas of your HR department that can be streamlined by the efforts of going paperless. Uh, we have a few different areas that we'll talk about today, and let's start with communication first. So paper memos are already considered to be a very outdated method of communicating with your employees, but you also must make sure that you're using available tools to communicate in other ways with your employees and your colleagues especially since many of us may not be in person today. Online messaging services can be a great way to chat virtually with your team in a quick and an effective manner. Our team loves using Slack for this purpose. Um, it keeps everyone in communication constantly. You can also use uh, Microsoft Teams for something like this. Um, inside the HR Partner System, our news polls feature is an excellent option for mass communication as well. Many clients may not know that when you create a news announcement, you can actually ask the system to broadcast an email out to every employee once it's posted so that they see the news announcement in their inbox and then they can comment on it in the HR partner uh, system where it will hover, where it will live until you want to close out that news announcement section. So definitely use the news and polls feature where your employees will have access to that for as long as you want. And of course, emailing is still an excellent method of communication, but have you considered adding a message to your signature line that perhaps discourages the printing of that email? Such a simple change can have a big, big impact. Um, and then last but not least, don't forget that SMS messaging your employees is available via our HR partner system as well. You can actually um, create SMS messaging and send that through our HR partner system so they get that text message right on their mobile device, a pretty helpful feature as well. So communication when we are remote, when we're working from home, when we're working from the office is more important than ever. And there's quite a different, quite a few different options to communicate paperlessly to both keep your employees engaged, to keep your team knowledgeable, such a huge part of creating that good culture. Let's move on to recruitment and onboarding. Employee recruitment and onboarding is one area where a lot of paperwork is required. Um, applicant resumes, 
legal forms, health-related medical forms, and other relevant documents of employees are usually in the form of paper, which makes it cumbersome for our HR teams to manage and store them safely. The fact that these documents are required um, is what makes this maintenance of this process so, so important. So digitizing the process is the perfect solution. While recruiting your new employees, you can ask them to email their resumes um, or use your current recruiting system and have candidates upload their resumes, their CVs, and any supporting documentation into the system instead of bringing along paper copies to an interview or on their first day of employment, have them uh, you know, maybe bring along a thumb drive or a USB drive with um, with electronic copies. Uh, remember, your company's image comes into play here again. If you are interviewing a candidate and you pull up a copy of your resume on a tablet or on a laptop with scanned copies of any identity proofs or any other documents, that sends the message to your candidates that you are technology-minded and you are on the cutting edge. Um, you can even consider adding to your interview emails to your candidates that bringing along paper copies of your resume is is discouraged, it's not necessary, and it won't have any bearing on the hiring process. Um, even if your office has already gone paperless to a degree, there's always some paperless uh, paperwork that takes place when hiring new employees. Um, and to avoid that, we can switch easily to online onboarding processes. And don't forget to use our checklists feature for this. This is why our checklists feature in HR Partner was created to allow electronic checklists uh, to be created for onboarding, for offboarding employees. Um, you can create those electronic checklist items and assign it to somebody and they're required to do all of those pieces so you don't have any paper waste. So any type of document, contract, or form can be digitized using our e-signature software. Um, e-signatures are such an easy way to go paperless from the get-go. And e-signatures for many forms are mandatory already. In fact, five years ago, when we were purchasing our home here in the States, we had to go through uh, hours of paper-based mortgage paperwork to go through with the process, with the title company, all of the signature required wet ink signature. And now I'm watching um, friends of ours go through that exact same process this month and everything's electronic. Everything's online via a DocuSign or an Adobe Sign signature portal and no wet ink signatures are required. So a lot can change in a short five-year span. And you see today that larger organizations and larger processes are making e-signatures mandatory and encouraging that formation of a new process. It's funny that we fill out a form online, we get that form printed, we sign it, we scan it back into the system. So this is something that HR managers tend to do almost every day. So why not remove the printing part altogether with the signatures? If we are going digital, we better make ourselves fully digitized and using e-signatures can ease the work from your HR staff to a great extent. And of course, creating online forms for distribution and access allows your employees to become involved as well. This way they are able to access online forms without being reminded by a supervisor. So it really puts the ownership on the employee. If you have an online form that's available for completion by an employee at any time, they can log into their portal, complete that online form without being reminded by a supervisor, which further relieves the burden of your supervisors who I'm sure have quite a lot on their plate as well. Personnel files are really the most obvious area to start when going paperless in an HR department. Scanning in many folders and filing cabinets worth of files can be so daunting and a true challenge for teams that are already stretched thin. Uh, many of our clients are also small business owners, and so you have small departments on top of that, and it can be a really daunting thing. So this is an excellent opportunity to involve other departments. So the first thing that you want to do is use that checklist that we'll provide with you to outline all types of files that are contained to make sure that you have everything already in that personnel file, and then to start that back and forth process of scanning in. So we talked a little bit about involving other departments. Perhaps there's an admin or a recent new hire that's available for assistance with scanning and organizing these files. Um, a good example of this is, is many, many years ago, I worked with an organization that worked to go paperless and started with their personnel files. 
Um, we were an organization of about 350 employees. And as you can imagine, there was a lot of paperwork involved, a lot of personnel files, even a lot of terminated files that we had to retain based on our retention policy. Um, so we used this as an opportunity to partner with a local university and we created an internship and co-op program that allowed for an intern to work for our HR department and simultaneously earn coursework credit uh, towards her degree. So it was an excellent part-time summer job and an internship program. And this allowed for our team to hire a new intern who was solely responsible for scanning, organizing, and categorizing all of the personnel files for our company. Um, this intern also created a naming convention for our department and filed away all of our files online according to our retention policies. So this meant that our regular team members were not taken away from their daily responsibilities. And it was a great opportunity to teach less experienced team members how to manage. So we actually got one of our more junior level, level um, HR representatives and HR generalists involved in managing this intern who was available part-time a few days a week and who was solely responsible for scanning in those personnel files for organizing them and then helping them go paperless. And once they were scanned in, she used that naming convention um, and ended up creating a naming convention for our company to use specifically. And so a few examples of a standard naming convention, this is something that you've probably used already, but this is a great area to implement online for you as well, is to create a naming convention that matches across all of your files. So this could be a file type, an employee name and a date. Um, perhaps you have the employee name and then the file details. So perhaps you have um, the, the Jane Doe, the offer letter, and then the date, or Jane Doe, and then any agreements that she had signed, and then a date. So when the, you're scrolling through and trying to recall some of this personnel files, and you're searching through electronic files, all of the naming conventions match and follow the same rhythm and the same cadence, which really just takes the pressure off of you searching through and finding these file names that can be a little bit wonky at first. So we'll go directly into storing files into your document library. So of course, when you're scanning in all these personnel files, then you have to store them some way and find a good way to store all of your files electronically. And there are so many different options for data storage in our current environment. And there's so many valuable resources to be able to store and manage your files. And your company may already operate with an intranet site where employees from all areas of the organization can create, can manage folders and files. Perhaps you use something like Google Drive or Dropbox to store your files. Um, and of course, HR Partner has a company library where clients are able to create and manage folders and then restrict access to those files based on departments. So if you need a file folder that's only viewable by the HR department, you can view that in our company library in our system. And we've already talked a little bit about the benefits of a standard naming convention. And this is not just for use across personnel files. Um, don't forget to mimic those conventions for other areas of your HR department from recruitment to benefits. Um, your files will be easier to find and to organize once you've outlined how things should be stored and saved. And if you have a retention policy already in place, um, don't forget to add details of that naming convention to your retention policy. Um, and when you move to paperless versions of files, you also need to figure out how that you want to track those document revisions. So documents that are shared with your team, of course, must always be up to date, especially as versions change. If you have an agreement or a company handbook is a perfect example of maybe you have an updated document that would change so this is where you want to consider creating a way to track any revisions. So you want to make sure that everything is up to date and you can do this via that file name, via that naming convention that we talked about. Perhaps you add a footer and in the footer has the date, the revision date and the revision naming convention. Um, you can also consider restricting access um, to minimize the opportunity for changes or for problems. And then, of course, don't forget to add 
this to your process, to your policy and your retention policy, your paperless policy. Let's talk a little bit about a paperless policy. Have you considered perhaps creating an internal paperless process as paperless policy as a, as a kickoff exercise to the process of going paperless? Um, so when you hear the word policy, sometimes it can be a little bit daunting because you're thinking of a, a formal policy document that then becomes concrete. Um, but you can create an internal process, an internal policy, and it's informal. It's only internal. So it only is uh, relevant for your HR department. Uh, and that will work to set expectations with your team and your department. It's a great way to lay the foundation for a future policy or document that would need to be shared with the company. And so when you're creating something like this and you're setting those expectations, one thing that you should always include is retention standards. So in a, a bulleted list, you create different standards for different scenarios. How long will I retain a document or a file for an employee who has been terminated? How long do I have to uh, retain versions of handbooks? How long do I have to retain um, any sort of files or any sort of benefits paper? Um, so, so this is the process. Uh, this is a really excellent part of involving your team and it lays that, that groundwork. It's a pro it's a part of any project management process and can often be compared to maybe a needs analysis where your needs are identified, qualified, um, and then given that task. So, so this is a very important part of that policy is creating those action items, those tasks. So you have no, no surprises when you decide to go paperless completely. You also want to talk a little bit about your security practices with your online system. So in addition to retention standards, add in a piece of creating security practices with your current online system. And then, you know, creating a policy like this can seem maybe a little bit unnecessary, uh, but it is a tool for accountability. So um, it allows you to iron out those logistics and those details so that when you get to the process of moving paperlessly, you have thought through all of the what ifs ahead of time. So you don't really have any surprises when you decide to go paperless completely. This is a simple way to show that you are prepared and you have thought this process through. This is also excellent for when you're involving those leadership team members, those, those stakeholders, um, because having that internal policy um, that's not necessarily written in stone, but is meant for your own department, it shows that you've put serious thought into the, the benefits of paperlessness, which of course we talked about at the beginning of the webinar today. So let's go ahead and talk through some tips and tricks uh, that we have kind of thought through. Some of these are, are a little bit more practical and helpful, especially as you're moving into the process of paperlessness. Um, the first one is unsubscribing from any printed catalogs and magazines. You can read them online. Instead, it's very, very easy to get email updates. Um, another one is taking your meeting notes and minutes online. You can bring your tablet, your laptop when attending meetings. There's not really any need to document meeting notes in person and then to then reformat those in an online version. If you already have the online version, they're very easy to share and access across team members and across departments. Uh, perhaps you consider purchasing a department stand scanner and placing it in an, a place that's very easy to access, easy to locate, um, something that anybody in the office can go in and use to scan any documents that do uh, still come in as a paper-based document. Um, and this one, of course, move printers into the office in a less convenient space. Uh, this will discourage your team from using the printer. Maybe you even remove the printer entirely. This is actually uh, more of a tongue-in-cheek one. When I was working at an organization that was going paperless years ago, uh, we were working on the second floor of our building and our printer in our wing of the office broke. It was down for two or three days. We could not print anything to that location. The next closest printer was actually on the third floor. So anytime we wanted to print a document, you had to walk up the stairs to the third floor, you know, wait and find that printer. If it was something that was that was maybe a little bit more confidential that you were printing, you then had to secure print in. So you had to key in your access code, press print, wait for it to print, and then grab the document. And it really just discouraged printing altogether. People did not want to go up to the third floor. 
because they did not want to have to be inconvenienced like that. So they just waited or they didn't print it or they operated more electronically. So maybe you consider that printer and you have fewer across your office space because if they're less conveniently located, you may not need them at all. So the next one, as we continue through tips and tricks, um, turn on your print to PDF functionality for all of your computers. So when you go into print options on any document, it usually gives you the option to print to PDF. You can then make that print to PDF the default setting, and that discourages the use of the printer and paper use altogether. Because instead of printing to a local network printer or your local wired printer, um, you're printing into a PDF document. You can then rename it to your company's naming convention. You've already decided this ahead of time, so it's very easy. It requires minimal brain power to be able to recall what the document should be named and that you can put it in a folder and recall it at any given time. So printing to PDF is a very, very simple setting. Um, very, very easy to be able to just discourage and switch that use. Uh, maybe even discuss with your vendors that uh, discouraging them from sending out any mailing documents or faxing over any documents and instead use email. Um, stress to them that you are going paperless and you're trying to operate as professionally as possible and email will be more than sufficient. This time is a really good idea to also take stock as to what sort of hardware your team members have. Uh, maybe your team members do need dedicated dual monitors and that will allow them to review documents on a screen on one side and then work from a different screen easily. And maybe not every uh, team member of yours will need a dual screen, but hardware concerns are definitely going to be something that you wanna take stock in, definitely something that would be part of that project planning process. Um, and of course, creating that paperless process policy for your organization, that sets the standard and the voice for the importance of a paperless organization and a paperless department. We talked a little bit about an internal paperless policy. If you start with that internal document, it's a very, very easy way to then move it into an external document that you create, you clean up to be shared for distribution across all of your documents, across all of your team members. So having that policy set out with your retention standards, your security standards, the hows and whys of going paperless, is a great, great way to pave the way for going paperless entirely. And so we're gonna finish up today by answering a few of your questions. Um, there are a few here that we have gathered in our Q&A window. So let me go ahead and go through these. So one of the questions that we have is, do you have a paperless policy to provide for us? So no, we don't, we don't have a standard policy. We do only have that checklist to get you started. Um, my recommendation for you when creating that paperless policy, again, start internally. So I would suggest to you start with an internal document, and this does not have to be a formal document, but it is just a standard. It's just a procedure that you're using. And you talk through your timeline, you add retention standards, um, you add in security standards, and you out, outline with your document, with your department, um, all three of those areas with just a blurb about why paperlessness is important and what your standards are going to be surrounding that. Sometimes with a project as large as going paperless across your entire department, um, sometimes starting small is going to be the easiest way to go through that process. So a starting small is always going to be the easiest way and outlining some of those um, is really, really a great way to do that. And that's in the form of a policy as, as mundane as, as that may sound. And we have one more question that came through that I really do want to answer. I'm wondering if there are any insights or suggestions for dealing with state agency requirements. So this is an excellent question and I do wanna address it briefly because um, of course, paperless policies and standards do need to take into effect your current local jurisdiction and guidelines, your state agency requirements. So this is a great way where your policy can outline some of these. So the first thing is to qualify what your state agencies are. So to find out what the requirements are for retention of a personnel record or a payroll file. Uh, so perhaps you're supposed to retain a payroll file for seven years. Um, and maybe there are certain requirements for how you retain that policy or that, that paperless 
um, file folder. Um, sometimes I have heard that confidential data and confidential documentation has to be behind two different types of locked key if it's in person. So an office door and a locked closet door and a locked filing cabinet is sufficient because it's at least two locks must be those confidential requirements. And of course, it depends on your, um, your current state agency requirements. So the first thing is to qualify what those are. Go to those state agency websites, um, do a quick Google search and search through what you're looking through. Use that checklist to go through and make sure that you're looking through every area of your HR department and qualifying those state agency requirements. Um, add on that list. Um, then from there, you, you, you'll find that many of them will provide guidance for retaining paperless versions versus paper-based versions. And many times retaining electronic versions are sufficient. Uh, there are always going to be documents and um, uh, situations where that may not be the case. And there are areas where I can understand that in an HR department, especially, you will have to have paper-based forms. But the goal here is minimizing and starting small. So start with the things that you can electronically digitize to get rid of that paper version and start with that, uh, that basic, uh, basic use and basic policy. But check out the websites, do a quick Google search, create that list, and figure out which state agency requirements you have to adhere to and, and prioritize those when you're going through that project planning. So it would be my suggestion that you do prioritize a requirement for a federal or state agency or a local jurisdiction. They're going to set the tone, especially if you go through anything like an audit or, you know, worst case scenario, perhaps even a, a lawsuit. So definitely want to check those. Um, and I understand that in the UK, the tax office forms, they are not editable online unless you pay in some cases. So I understand that UK, US-based, um, every jurisdiction, no matter where you're located, is a little bit different. Um, and so that's why I would suggest you look at your local state guidelines that are listed online, and then you outline them in that policy. So if you know how you plan to proceed, that will at least give you a good action item and a good guideline for that project list. Because if you know that tax office forms are not going to be allowed online, they're not even editable online, that sounds like something will have to be printed, will have to be edited and then uploaded. Um, and you want to know that that retention policy is going to fall in line with those guidelines. So check online, check the websites, write out a blurb of what those standards are and make sure that you as an HR professional are staying on top of those guidelines as well. It's, it's a part of part of the HR department life and world, unfortunately, to stay on top of all those little guidelines um, that you may have. Um, and last but certainly not least, we want to ask you to stay tuned for our next webinar series in early 2021. We have some exciting things planned for 2021. And hopefully the goal is to help educate you on the ever-changing world of, of human resources and to help make your job um, as easy as possible as you guide your teams, your departments, and your organizations. Thank you so, so much for joining us today, and we hope you have a, a wonderful day. Thank you very much.